How's it going, eh? I got a hoser's holiday guide to the holidays. I guess that's redundant, right? It's just a holiday guide. Well, it's a Merry Christmas guide. I'm not just saying happy holidays because that offends people. Um, I got five steps here on how to make this go a little smoother because it's got to go smooth. Friends are temporary, right? Family's forever. This might seem boring to you. It might even seem pedantic, but it's crucial that you get along with your family, eh? You're going to look back and go, these were the important days. Okay, so here's number one. And this just uh, doesn't go for hanging out with the fam. This is for when you go out with beers in your home. No, <laughs> go out with beers and four beers in your hometown. People are going to say, if, this is only if you come from a big cool city and you're going to a little town, right? People are going to say, how's blah, blah, blah. In my case, I've been in New York for 15 years. They go, how's New York? Now, I never knew how to answer that question because I'm like, what? How's an 18 million person city? I don't know. Bunch of buildings got knocked down with some planes there in, uh, in September of uh, 2001. Did you hear about that? Like, I don't know what to say. Then I realized, no, that's not why they're asking. They're wondering... What if they went down there and it bugs them, right? Because they're curious. So you got to satiate that curiosity and make it sound like they didn't make a mistake not moving to your town. Just say it sucks. And that's what I say when people ask how New York is. I say it sucks. It's not hard to say because New York does suck. And then you just list things and you go, yeah, oh, it's it, it's so loud. And there's there was a, a rat carrying a pizza the other day and there's sirens all the time. Even in the middle of the night, you hear beep, beep, beep as some stupid truck reverses because it doesn't want to run over a kid, even though it's two in the morning for crying out loud. And there's a siren every 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Then they seem to perk up a bit and you have a gay old time. Number two, here's a doozy. And this applies to the family, but also to friends. Avoid politics, eh? Look, I get that way too. I'm just like you. I just want to poke the fire. I want to say something like, uh, oh, the poor need money, do they? Why are they so fat then? Why is the only thing bigger than their giant ass their giant TV? You know that's just going to make your aunt mad. You know you got your mom's sister steaming now. Don't play that game. Even if you got a good buzz going and you feel like a fight, that's lame. Keep it away from politics. Keep it to stupid subjects like would you rather drown or be buried alive, right? And if you do have to go near politics, keep her interrogative. Like go, oh, well, I seem to recall it was, uh, wasn't it uh, Clinton that first invaded Iraq? And they go, what? No, that was George W. Bush, eh? And you go, oh, okay. I could have sworn there's something called Desert Fox where Clinton got in there first, but I could be wrong. You know, that's going to come up later and they'll see you're right. You don't have to be right, okay? You don't have to betray yourself and sit there and say, cops kill everyone and we need to arrest all cops. But you just sort of stroke your chin and go, I wonder what the number of people are killed by cops and the number of people killed by gangs. Hmm. Don't get too smarmy, but you get the idea. Number three, pack long sleeve shirts that aren't too thick. Now, I know you got this idea in your head of the Christmas sweater. That's not going to work. Those things are boiling hot, and I can't believe dummies out there wear a collar underneath a sweater that thick. You're at an old person's home. They're constantly cold. They think 70 degrees is cold. You wear a sweater with a shirt at, at 70 degrees, you're going to die. You wear a flannel with 70 degrees, you're going to die. Okay, I'll just wear a t-shirt. No, you probably have tattoos. And your folks, your aunts and uncles, your granny, they don't like your tattoos. Your tattoos are retarded. You know what this is? Is this from my time in the Marines? Is this a picture of my friend who died that I tried to save when I was a, a cop? No, it's a tattoo of Randy Macho Man Savage saying, aren't thou bored? Check it out. Again? Again. And I spelled it wrong too. It's not aren't thou bored, it's art thou bored. You don't want to be showing your dad's friends that. So you got to have long sleeves. And if you don't want to boil alive, those sleeves got to be thin. So pack some normal dress shirts. Number four, and this is a doozy, eh? You got to avoid hard liquor. I love that sweet rotten corn, that Maker's Mark and that Jefferson and that Woodford Reserve. I love it as much as you do, eh? But you just can't indulge yourself because you're starting around two. And if you do hard liquor that early in the day, you're going to get blind drunk, pass out drunk. And that means you're going to slip backwards off a chair and you're going to cut your forehead on the coffee table. And now the next day, when everyone's sitting down, you've got this weird bandage on your head. You're drinking for eight hours a day on these things and you got to have beer. In fact, I don't want to go crazy, but I would suggest light beer, blue light. And no, it doesn't mean less calories. That's a myth. It means less alcohol. 
Uh, also, by the way, when you get too hammered and you wake up on Christmas morning, you look like a weird little fetal Eskimo with your puffy eyes and your hair all askew. It's embarrassing in those photographs and the kids are all happy and wide awake and you look like you were born about a year early. And number five, here's a doozy and this is really the only one you have to listen to, eh? Number one rule for the Christmas break, engage. I don't mean give some hot chick a ring while you're on one knee. I mean get involved. Do the dishes, even if there's three in there. Even if you don't know where the mugs go, just get in there and start cleaning up fucking grab a bunch of papers put them near where the recycling is pick up some clothes they don't have to go where they're supposed to go it's about the gesture just grab like some kid's pants that he left there and put them on the stairs like oh that's where that'll go you know and take your shoes off too that's another one you should bring some slippers but uh play with the kids the kids are sitting there hey what's your name eh you wrestle with them or, or pretend you're farting by moving your butt on a leather chair and go oh sorry that's my stomach they always laugh at any fart jokes uh, Google what your uncle does. Figure it out. Maybe he, you got to figure out what rack and pinion steering is. You can ask him some questions. Sometimes people don't like to socialize, right? Or they, they got weird Asperger tendencies. Treat them like Google. Ask them a bunch of questions. So what's that you do? How much do those cost? How much does manufacturing cost? What's the net on that, eh? Force yourself. It's like picking up chicks. Even if you get dumped, you got to get some phone numbers. And if no one wants to talk... Break out the cards. I can't say enough about card games during the holidays. Just sitting there going, oh, an ace, eh? Oh, now we're playing hardball. Talking about minutia like that, you're still engaging. You're still establishing a family relationship. And I'm telling you, I know it's boring and you feel like I got to get through this. I can't wait to get home and do what? Watch Law & Order? Look, your, your life at home isn't that great. You, you sitting on your ass in the couch is pretty darn similar to sitting on your aunt's couch. And this matters, okay? Friends are fleeting. Fame is but a flit in the wind. Uh, money, that just goes down the drain. But if there's one thing that endures forever, that's family. So make it work, guys, and have yourselves a Merry Christmas holiday season, New Year's. I'm perfectly still.